Hello, and welcome to episode nine of Cyberman and Son. We're here at the Cyber Control Center, and you know what, Andrew? Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. By the time you see this, Christmas will almost certainly be over and done with, but nevertheless, we are going to celebrate with a very special Christmas episode today. And what's that episode, Andrew? Attack of the Cybermen. You see, two days from now is Christmas for us, but for you it's probably been five days, four days, you know, around there. Whatever. Yeah, now, so this is our first uh, sixth Doctor story. Thumbs up if you're watching 2019. <laughs> uh, now, um, although this is the only time that the sixth Doctor encounters the Cybermen during the original run, we're going to have a special episode next time with the sixth Doctor, so it won't be our only time with him. So, are you all ready, Andrew? Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, and technically, there is 11 stories we'll be counting for the classic series. Yes, Andrew... Andrew is right. There were nine Cybermen stories. However, we've included two stories. One was the Five Doctors from last week, and the next one is next week for Real Time, which was a web series that was animated. And I, when I first saw it, I really liked it, but we'll talk about that next week. Let's get going. So as you can see already, it's like the Fifth Doctors, but it's, uh, it's flashier, right? How long have they kept this intro? Uh, just two years. Actually, sort of one year. They changed the music around for the second year. Attack of the Killer Cybermen. Alright, let's see what's going on. Sewers. Uh oh. Could that be the same sewers? Same sewers from the invasion? Maybe. Because the invasion would have only been like 10 years before this. Or so. Whoops. Action. What are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. Repair the chameleon circuit. He's repairing the chameleon circuit. No, it's not. It's been working properly. It's been many amazing things. I'll tell that myself. It's had a few times. They can change shape to prevent perfect in the surrounding environment. Not yet, you don't. I wonder why I didn't do it before. What the heck is this music? Oh, here we go. So let's see if the doctor is able to fix this chameleon, chameleon circuit. Yeah, of course it does. It's Earth. It's Totter's Lane. It's the junkyard the Totter's first landed in yeah, back in the 60s. Where are we? Scrapyard. Hey, another new band. Band. Wait, this episode really wants me to get comfortable. Hmm? I thought you said it was going to blend into its surroundings. I'm just probably thinking about it. Come on, let's find out where those signals are coming from. That's true. It's Vulgans. Kill it. Oh, neat, Doctor. Neat. Very neat. I mean, there's nothing at all incongruous about that. Well, she hasn't done it for a long time. She's had a practice. Of course not. Community circus is still not working 100%. Oh. That's if you can find the entrance. How do we get in? I'm not sure. There's well, well, still is a way in. Of course there is. Somewhere. But that's the wrong clock. It's right beside it. Conveniently around the back. <laughs> like how they don't freak out. They're just like, yeah, that's normal. We saw that before. How many episodes are in this one? Two. Oh my goodness. Well, but uh, in this season, the episodes are 45 minutes long. Just just like uh, the new, new Doctor Who. The episodes are 45 minutes. An hour 
and a half. Yep. Which is about the same as like a four episode story. How does a person make a sound with their mouth like this? Okay, what is this purple? Oh, the bad graphics are after me! The bad graphics! Oops. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not saying a word. I'm sure Morgan. I'm Some human stuff left in there. Rain? A little bit. But what do you do after you go inside with the Cyberhead? What are you going to do next? Right? The doctor wasn't that kind of guy. He wouldn't even do that to Adalic. He's a bit rough, is it? Squeeze skull. Yeah, it's nasty. Run, run, run. Wait, well, it's. Blasting up. Uh -oh. uh oh. How did he get in there? Also, how does he know it's camouflage? What the head? Actually, that's quite painful. It's like the fear siren again. Okay, so you don't how just need a chest then. 
done it in a while. Give it a second. Let it think about it. Um, that's a little better, but I don't think that fits here. Um, well, uh, wait, maybe, maybe it needs to uh, suss out the environment a little more and try again. Let's, let's see. Mm, that doesn't work at all. Oh. I don't like it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's still figuring it out. Let's, uh, oh, there it goes. Oh, that's just ridiculous. What is that? Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna change it back on. She must live. You cannot agree to bargain, Doctor. It would be unfortunate if you were with you, but we should still have your TARDIS. Not anymore, you don't. What? In precisely 20 seconds, you and it will cease to exist. Release the woman. How do I know you won't cheat and change your mind? You have my word. <laughs> I'm not sure that's enough. Promises also, to aliens have no merit. Cyber controller. Telos is the Cybermen's home planet. Uh-huh. Adopted planet. No wonder. You're right, adopted. Telos Perry. In the old days, when the Cryons were in residence, they were the indigenous population the Cybermen wiped them out. They had nowhere else to go. So the Cryons, Telos was their home world. The Cybermen invaded, took it over, Telos. killed off the Cryons. Oh, the, Cryons. the people who used to live on Telos. Refrigeration. Oh, so those strange. guys who are like working Maybe. There? They might be crayons. When you build refrigerated cities the way the crayons did. They had a genius crayons. for it. Mind you, they had to. They couldn't live in ten Crayola. Zero. Mondas, there we go. the cyber planet was destroyed. Don't tell them how it was destroyed. You're enjoying this. It's not often I have the opportunity to watch a Time Lord squirm. It blew up whilst it was attacking Earth. What? Tell them when. Take no notice of him, he's just trying to unnerve you. Your planet survived the attack. When did it happen? 1986. Next year? That's almost now. You could put it that way. Well, you, well, you must do something. Uh, inform Earth. Tell them it's coming. I mean, what's happening to us now must have something to do with it. How can but I do anything? I'm a prisoner. Even if they you were free, you couldn't. You would transgress the laws of time. Continually. Not to that extent. No, they Even only I the Antarctic. Have to be careful. Time None of them go all across the world. And that would please you. Look, don't worry. Earth survived with minimal damage to historical fact. What is that? They're in a dresser? Oh, they're in a wardrobe. What happened to the organ? How big they were. I can understand why they call them tumors. Why? There are different kinds of cyber in here. And the controller awaits your arrival. Wait, this <laughs> Ooh, they're much stronger, Cybermen. What? Wait, 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 wait. Why do they look like that? We don't know what time or when this takes place, but. So this is a different tomb? I don't know. I don't know what's what happening when this takes place. So I wonder where these guys are from. These humanoids. Because they're not cryons. Cryons can't live on the surface. So where are they from? What? 
gun at them. Yeah. At him and say that this is a prisoner that they're taking to the. That's leaders. their plan, right? Why aren't they sticking to their plan? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, because it's not Cyrus. So they don't know who those guys are. Uh, They're gonna rescue Mondas. They're on a rescue mission to Mon save Mondas. What? That's, that's why they've traveled back in time. They're gonna save Mondas. But it already happened. Nope. They're in 85. Mondas was 86. still take rather a large bomb. They have one. A natural one. Uh, a large bomb. Not do anything. She says, "Ah." There you go. They're gonna use Haley's comet. They're gonna make it crash into there. That they can do. Changing the course slightly. They are. They're taking their time about it. For a start, what? The yes. Time Lords are using the moment, a rather angry one. Red. to stop the Cybermen. You see, the Cybermen dealt with as much as the Time Lords do. Oh. Surely it must have occurred that's, to you that if Mondas hadn't been destroyed, the Cybermen would never have come here. Yes, yeah. they're using them. No, we'll talk about that. The Time Lords hated them anyway. At this point, um, yeah, touch and go. But they want to use them. I know that you plan to steal or destroy my time vessel. You will tell me how it is to be done. Breaking his hands. Ooh, okay, Cybermen are overly powered. <laughs> ah, coming back. That's right. And I'm just beginning to find out about you. Cyber guns. anybody quite as badly as I did Lip. That's what it ends with? Yep. So that was Attack of the Cybermen. What do you think, Andrew? I don't know. It's just kind of odd. 
it is really kind of a weird one, isn't it? Uh, well, I mean, let's start with the basics. What did you like about it? How the TARDIS just kept changing. Sure, there was a comedic element and also something that should have been addressed, or, well, and had sort of been addressed a little bit in the series, is that, like, why can't the Doctor just fix the chameleon circuit? It would actually save him a lot of trouble. Like when we saw with Earth, Earthshock, the only reason they knew the Doctor was there is because the TARDIS was a police box. Um, so this is something that's addressed, but we find out that, one, uh, the TARDIS has a hard time now figuring out how it should blend in, and two, the Doctor doesn't really actually like it when it's not a police box anymore. He's just, yeah, he's just not satisfied unless it's a police box. Fair enough. Okay, so yeah, we addressed that point. Should we get into our timeline? Yep. Let's get into our timeline because this one, one of the positives of this episode is it answers a couple questions, um, but it was not so straightforward. So. Our timeline. Numero uno. Remember, in the invasion. And the invasion plays an important part in this story, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the invasion, the cyber controller uh, computer mentions that they saw the Doctor in, on Planet 14. We never saw Planet 14. We still haven't seen Planet 14. But Planet 14 was sometime prior to 1970. Okay, cool. The invasion was, uh, as we said before, was the next one, and that's... Probably 1970, somewhere in there. BBC website also says 1969. Now, we had said when we saw the invasion, they had been activating Cybermen and just pumping them into the sewers, right? Yeah. Uh, and now we find out that like this story takes place um, a, 10 to 15 years after the invasion. It's really hard to say when exactly, but parts of the sewers had been walled up and had been bricked off. And not even the city maintenance workers knew about it. So I think UNIT had gone down and blocked them, blocked off sections where they couldn't safely account for Cybermen. And there were Cybermen still down there. Okay, we figured that out. Great. And now we pretty much know um, why the Cybermen from this story, from the far, far future, have come back to this time, 1985. They've come back to take... The remaining Cybermen that were left there from the invasion to put them into their army, and because it's one year before the Tenth Planet. So attack the Cybermen, 1985, Tenth Planet, it's 1986. They're back there for a deliberate purpose because it's right between the invasion and it's and the Tenth Planet. Okay, makes sense. Now remember the Moon Base then takes place in, uh, at around 2070, about 90 years later. The Will in Space we said somewhere around 2071 to 21. 19, Earthshock, boom, firm deadline, 2526. Now, remember, we mentioned in the Earthshock review that the, the Cybermen had a time machine. We're so certain the time Cybermen had a time machine, but we didn't know the details about it. And we have some details, which we'll get to in a second. So, Tomb of the Cybermen on Telos, which takes place on Telos, is 2570. But the Cybermen that we see here on Telos are more advanced than the ones we saw in Tomb of the Cybermen, right? So, it only makes sense, though, that this has to take place after Tomb of the Cybermen, then. Revenge of the Cybermen is 2875, and, the, and in Revenge of the Cybermen, they look uh, and are a lot weaker, right? So, here's my thought. Attack of the Cybermen takes place, uh, the Telos scenes take place way after 2875. Um, the Five Doctors, the Cybermen who were snatched up at the time scoop, are almost identical to the, the Cybermen from Earthshock. So, at some point um, after 2875, after the 29th century, um, these Cybermen, the remaining Cybermen on Telos, who have continued to advance, maybe some of them were, were thought out, um, a time machine lands. The Cybermen kill the occupants and hijack that time machine. Um, they don't really know how to work it too well. Their first mission is they send back a squad to 2526 and Earthshock. Now, the Cybermen, we didn't see the time machine there during Earthshock, and they didn't seem to be able to escape. So I think the Cybermen were dropped off. They're like, here, you're in 2526. Oh, this is around where Peace Conference is. So deal with that. Okay, contact the Cyber Forces there. Deal with that. And then they went back. And then with the Cyber Controller... 
um, they tried again, and they said, "Okay, well, when else can we can we influence history?" Uh, 1980, like right um, when before Mondas is destroyed. And now, if you think about it, this is a good plan because Mondas is a whole planet of Cybermen. And what's the number one thing that Cybermen are missing? Um, planet. Troops. They need troops. They snatch, like, Litton, when he first goes up to them, he says, Oh, I brought these, these guys for you to, to take and convert to Cybermen. And the Cybermen are like, Whoa, thanks! Because they need troops. Anytime that they can get a person and convert into Cyber Cybermen, they're like, yeah. So, I think it's... Cybermen in this episode, though, are much stronger than the other ones. Yeah. They, like... Slightly grab a hand and just break. Just crunch them. Just crunch them, yeah. So, I think Attack the Cybermen, the Telos scenes, exist uh, after the 29th century and are quite far in the future. Does this break your hand? Yeah, Andrew wants to demonstrate the hand breaking. No. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the Cybermen. Now, I thought with the five doctors in Earthshock, I thought the Cybermen were great. Great costume design, great voice, you could understand what they were saying. I thought it was great. Now, what did you think about the cyber costumes this time? They were pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. What about the cyber voices? Well, they were a little crunchier. Yeah. Now, the cyber leader was played by David Banks again, and I think he was the only one who did a really good job. Not the cyber controller, the cyber leader with the black. He sounded, he sounded fine, but you know, some of them spoke kind of weird. The SKPs have destroyed the Cyber Scouts. That is not possible. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of them were kind of weird, and they kind of were a little more robotic. Um, but, and when they opened up the faceplates, I didn't see any cyborg stuff. It looked mechanical. Um, so again, writers of Doctor Who, the Cybermen are not robots. They were people, and they have been mostly cyber converted, but there's still people in there somewhere. There's, there's like still brain, slight heart, some, slight yeah. stomach lining. They're cyborgs. There's still people inside. We you know would be really creepy. The doctor pulled down, and there was a. Like a face with eyes popping out. Like a half decayed face? Yeah, that would have been, but... Um, like a, with half a robotic skeleton. Yeah, that would, that, would have been, that would have been really cool, actually. Um, kind of morbid. But now, when I say, though, that would have been kind of morbid, like, that's not out of tune with the rest of the episode. I don't know. You did actually mention it. This story was really violent. There was a lot of violence in this. Like, I'm... I'm I'm no prude, but I was actually shocked at how violence like the doctor was shooting Cybermen left, right, and center, and he was going and beating people up and, and stabbing and stabbing out and stuff like that. And I didn't mind when the detective was shooting the Cybermen. That's his job. He's a cop, right? But I mean, there was a lot a lot of violence in this. And the episode. Cybermen, after getting shot, they just exploded. Yeah, like we saw in Earthshock when the doctor shot the Cyber Leader. Uh, it was honestly because he was backed into a corner the cyber leader was gonna have a TARDIS you can't have a Cyberman but I mean like now the doctor's just going around uh, like just gunning down Cybermen and stuff like that it was it was strangely violent and um, I feel like the writer um, was just using it as a way to solve problems and so the doctor wasn't using his head as much um, as much as he was was using violence. Like, plus, the doctor doesn't even use weapons. Like, well, what happened he did. to him? This he did. He was using weapons left, right, and center. He even kept a regular gun with him instead of, like, ew, gun. He just, in the pocket and stuff. Exactly. Like, um, what happened to the doctor? We did find out something that makes a little more sense here. Uh, and the doctor found out, too. That, and this supports something from Revenge of the Cybermen. The Time Lords have been watching the Cybermen, and every time the Cybermen get too strong they send the doctor to stop them without the doctor even knowing. And this explains Revenge of the Cybermen to me. Remember when I said that the, the Vogans, their symbol was the Gallifreyan symbol? It was, it said to me, it implied to me that the Ga Ga Gallifrey, the Time Lords, had been meddling in the past with Voga before, and when the Cybermen threatened to come up again, they, they uh, you know, manipulated the TARDIS into into going. No what? Uh, well, no, they didn't manipulate the TARDIS. They manipulated the time ring into sending the Doctor to the 29th century to stop the to stop the Cybermen. You know something? And then with Earthshock, 
when remember when the Doctor and Adric were fighting, and then the Doctor said, okay, I'm just gonna land anywhere or whatever, and then stormed out. I don't think the TARDIS landed randomly. I think the Time Lord sent the TARDIS there to involve the Doctor. And this one again, I think honestly, the Time Lords are like, Cybermen are getting a little uppity. Let's just send the Doctor and he'll clear it up. So. Plus, I think the Time Lords have all the control of the TARDIS, and then they gain the Doctor's trust, they give the power to him. You, and, and actually, Andrew is not far off. Remember when I mentioned the two Doctors? We find out that it has happened before where the, doc, where the uh, Time Lords have installed... It's called the Statenheim Remote um, that allows them to, to kind of like pilot the TARDIS a little bit. And I think you're right. I think there's been times when they've gone into the TARDIS and they've, you know, fiddled around with it a little bit. Um, those silly Time Lords. Okay, here's what I want to know. The end of episode number one. The Doctor goes into the TARDIS. Cybermen are already in there. How did they get in? Explain to me how they got in. The TARDIS is locked. It's been a major plot element in tons of Doctor Who stories, past ones, current ones, future ones. The TARDIS is almost impossible to break into. How did they get in? Plus, how would they know it's from the back and not the front? Well, how would they even know they, they come up? How would they recognize the TARDIS? It, it's not in its police box shape. It was what, an organ? How did they know that was the TARDIS? How did they get in? It just makes no logical sense. I think I have an idea of what. I think the producers are like, yeah, let's just let's just put Simon in there for dramatic effect. I, no, I think you're. I think Andrew, you are 100% right. I think I don't think it was the producers. The producers are just the ones who pay for it. I think the writer was just like, uh, we need to end the episode and the, the Cybermen have to get aboard the TARDIS somehow. Oh, let's just say they were already in there. They figured it out. They got in. Uh, excuse me? No, this actually happens again in um, the 1996 Doctor Who movie with the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann, where they, uh, a, a Chang Lee, I think the kid's name is, he goes, he takes the Doctor's key he goes into the TARDIS, he goes in, and the Master is in there already. And I was like, excuse me, how did the Master get in there? How did he get in? I know he's a Master. I know he's a Master thief, but that just... No, oh it, no. My so gosh. whenever... And, and it's always made a bit... In fact, actually, the last episode of... Uh, or the last... Yeah, the last episode, last story of the, the series, Survival, uh, with the Seventh Doctor... The, the Master makes it back to Earth, and he tries to break into the TARDIS, and he's trying to get in, but he can't do it, and he's trying to break in. Uh, Mind-boggling. How did they get... How, and this this is an important thing. Now, here's something you may not notice. Do you remember how many Cybermen went into the TARDIS at the end of Episode 1? Yeah. It was like five or six. Maybe even a little more. How many Cybermen came out? Two. Mm -mm. No, there was the first couple that came out with the, the Doctor and Perry and stuff. But then you're thinking of the two that came out after. Four came out. How many Cybermen are still on board the TARDIS? None. There sh well, no, there sh <laughs> Using math, there should be some still on the TARDIS. Now, that being said, we know that the Doctor could probably seal off parts of the TARDIS and stuff, but... Uh, Leaving a Cyberman in there? Well, right? And I'll tell you right now, even the BBC's own website says there's probably at least, at least one more Cyberman still in the TARDIS somewhere. Or maybe the Doctor's just going to go in and start shooting it too. I mean, I don't know. Right? Or maybe in like a future episode for present day, the Doctor's just searching through his TARDIS and he finds a just laying down Cyberman body covered in cobweb and he's like, how old is this? <laughs> it would, it would, you know, can you imagine? It would be a long time. I didn't like the pacing in this story. Sometimes nothing was happening and it was boring. And then other times everything was happening all at once. And I was like, what's going on? And I'd be like, Shh, sh hold on. What's, what's, what's going on? What's happening now, right? Oh, it's something about explosives and Perry's rescued and Lytton's being converted and this and this. Uh, the pacing was really bad. And in then this after episode. that, it was like, okay, conversation, conversation. Yeah, at the, the very end, it's just like, well, Linton's dead. Uh, let's go. <laughs> exactly. Although we see that a lot with Doctor Who. It's just like, well, I guess we're done. The end. Wait, guys, why are you wandering in the cow field? Bye. Okay, bye. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, another couple couple things. You never notice, like, why didn't Perry leave? I'm scared, Doctor. You don't seem to understand that. 
it didn't seem like she really wasn't having a good time. She didn't really seem to like the doctor. She didn't like anything that was going on. She was scared. She was even scared of him piloting. Just while going past Haley's Comet, she was scared. So they arrive in London in 1985. And I'm surprised she wasn't just like, well, you know what? Mm, I've only been with you like a couple weeks, but I'm done. Goodbye. She didn't, she didn't look like she was enjoying herself. She looked like she was like really having a hard time. She also kind of hated the doctor. Yeah. She just didn't like being there uh, at all. The other, How like, long has she stayed with the doctor? Uh, she was with him a couple years. Oh my goodness, what the heck? Okay, so like, take even Tegan, for example, one of the past companions. She complained all the time, but whenever something was going on, she dove right into it. She got herself super involved. She tried to help people. She said, no, I'm coming, I'm dealing with this. Perry didn't want to do anything. She didn't want to be there the entire story. Uh, and so it's just like, why is she here? At all. Because she's hot. What? No, uh, she actually isn't. She has big boobs, but she's not hot. Personal opinion. Okay. Um, Andrew and I both talked about this. What was with the music? Oh. The music was so lame. It was so lame. And it was lazy, too. There was the, the main theme whenever Lytton was going around was that... <coughs> Simple piano piece. I don't know what it's called. I'm gonna put it up here. That and it was a variation on that. So first off, really lazy. Secondly, very cheesy synth. And I understand it was the 80s, and I watched a lot of Fifth Doctor stories, but I mean, like... At least it's like, not as cheesy as that army music in the past. Yeah, but it's different cheesy. Ooh. It's different cheesy. Um, so, music. Eh. No thanks. Uh, and secondly, um, the sewers, like, they were in a lot of the sewers at the beginning, the first episode, and I appreciate it was a throwback to the invasion, but I mean, even the invasion, which was, like, what, uh, 20 years before this? had more settings. I felt like they were in the sewers way too much, and it was just like... Just wandering the sewers and like, no, it's been like, I don't know, 13 years, let's just keep walking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And what about the cryons too, right? They're I... so freaky. They just touch like, it's just, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. But, I will say though, it was once we got off Earth and we got back to Telos, that was nice. Telos looked the exact same as, well, not the exact same, but similar enough to as it did in Tomb of the Cybermen. And we got to go back to, uh, we got to go back and, um, and see it again. And, um, and we got to explore the history of Telos a little more. You know, why the Cybermen, uh, chose it as their, their new homeworld, their adopted homeworld. Although, they wanted to destroy Telos, but we never really actually got an answer as to why. But you know what? It would actually be funny if the 13th or 14th Doctor in the future actually found one of those old Cybermen that looks like the ones <laughs> in, in the this TARDIS. episode. Yeah. Just laying in the TARDIS, covered in cobwebs, probably like rusted. And, he, and the Doctor's like, how old is that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <sighs> I would love to see that episode. <laughs> Okay, Andrew, I think we've harped on this episode enough. Let's put on our thinking caps, our cyber caps. What are we going to rate Attack of the Cybermen? So, we're going to say 3.1? Yeah. Okay, so, simply because, think, like, I, I'll agree. Simply because um, it's uh, it really helps illustrate the... Um, a lot more about the Cybermen and the history, and it clears up, it answers some questions, and it's really integrated. Uh, I think I'll agree with Andrew, we're going to give Attack the Cybermen 3.1 Cybermats out of 5. Um, might be a, we might be a little generous here, um, but I think it's just because the, the pacing is the biggest turnoff, and some glaring plot, plot holes. But uh, in terms of like a, a cyber story, okay. Oh, and, and you know what? The Cyberman's plan wasn't terrible. So, it's got that. Next week, uh, we are going to... Um, although it's a sixth Doctor story, it came out in the early 2000s. I think it was 2002. Uh, it, what? Yeah, yeah. Because it was a big Finnish audio adventure. So, 
when Doctor Who wasn't on TV anymore, there was a whole bunch of uh, recordings. Like they would, they would just do like uh, kind of like podcasts, but they do radio programs basically uh, on audio. And they took a few of them and animated them. And this is one of the ones they animated. It's called Real Time. It, and it has the Sixth Doctor in it. Colin Baker reprises his role as the Sixth Doctor. And actually, when I first saw it, I actually really liked it. But will I like it now, going forward? I guess we'll find out next time. It's only been 15 years. Uh, well, and I haven't watched the whole thing in 15 years. Well, like and subscribe. And how many Sour Mats would you rate it? We haven't been getting a lot of comments lately. So we would appreciate some like tips on what we should do for skits when we really have to and in case we like miss some editing even though we rewatch and you know so please help us see you next time